At 79, Jacqueline Smith appears eerily youthful, almost as if time has forgotten to touch her. Despite the trials of her personal life, including several unsuccessful marriages, her beauty remains unscathed. Dressing with an air of vitality and vigor, Jacqueline possesses secrets to maintain her radiant complexion and ward off wrinkles. Witnessing her age-defying appearance in this video will leave you spellbound, questioning the mystical forces that preserve her youthful allure amidst the trials of life. Look at this. As the warm California sun bathes the pristine facade of her Los Angeles mansion in a soft glow, Jacqueline Smith, at 79 years old, exudes an aura of timeless elegance. With each step she takes, there's an effortless grace, a poise honed over decades in the spotlight. Today, she's preparing for yet another photo shoot, a testament to her enduring allure and undying passion for her craft. Jacqueline's hair, a cascade of chestnut waves, seems untouched by the passage of time, bouncing with vitality as she moves. Her slender figure, a testament to her dedication to health and fitness, still commands attention with its subtle curves and innate grace. It's a silhouette that's become synonymous with glamour, a legacy of her iconic portrayal as one of Charlie's angels. In the realm of television, Jacqueline stands as a beacon of longevity and versatility. While others may have come and gone, she remained steadfast throughout the entirety of the series' five-year run, cementing her status as an indispensable member of the trio. The mere thought of the infamous Charlie summoning his angels back to action feels like a nostalgic echo, a reminder of a bygone era when crime fighting was as chic as it was daring. Yet Jacqueline's talents extend far beyond the realm of crime drama. In the years following her tenure as an angel, she effortlessly transitioned into the realm of TV movies, earning herself the title of the Queen of the Miniseries. With each new role, she showcased her range and depth as an actress, embodying iconic figures from history and literature with equal finesse. From the compassionate aura of Florence Nightingale to the poised grace of Jackie Kennedy, Jacqueline breathed life into each character she portrayed, earning accolades and admiration along the way. It was her portrayal of Jackie Kennedy that particularly captured hearts, earning her a prestigious Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress. A testament to her enduring talent and ability to captivate audiences with her performances. In 1985, Jacqueline Smith embarked on a new chapter of her illustrious career, Venturing into the realm of business with a bold and pioneering spirit, with her keen eye for style and her innate understanding of what women desired, she launched her own collection of women's clothing for the esteemed U.S. department store, Kmart. Little did she know that she was about to revolutionize the industry, pioneering the concept of celebrities not just endorsing brands, but actively masterminding their own. As she delved into the world of fashion, Jacqueline's empire expanded rapidly, encompassing not only clothing, but also branching out into home furnishings, wigs, and skincare products. Her name became synonymous with elegance and sophistication, her brand a beacon of quality and style in an ever-evolving market. But Jacqueline's trailblazing spirit wasn't confined to the boardroom. In her personal life, she approached relationships with the same determination and resilience that defined her career. By the time she welcomed her two children in her late 30s, she had already experienced the highs and lows of matrimony three times over. Yet, she faced each challenge with unwavering strength, refusing to settle for anything less than she deserved. I'm all for people not putting up with mess, she remarked candidly, reflecting on her early divorces with a sense of pragmatism and self-assurance. On the set of her latest photo shoot, surrounded by a chorus of admiration from the crew, Jacqueline exudes an air of quiet confidence. As she effortlessly strikes pose after pose, her years of experience in front of the camera shine through, each movement a testament to her enduring grace and poise. Good acting, guys she quips briskly, acknowledging the subtle flattery with a knowing smile. She may be accustomed to the praise, but she remains grounded, 
her focus unwavering as she strives for perfection in each frame. Despite her status as a timeless beauty and a fashion icon, Jacqueline remains refreshingly humble when it comes to her own appearance. Reluctant to scrutinize the images as they're captured, she admits, I have a hard time looking at myself. Nestled amidst the opulent splendor of Los Angeles Sunset Boulevard, Jacqueline Smith's sprawling 25 million, 19.3 million. Mansion stands as a testament to her success and refined taste. A long, winding driveway, flanked by lush magnolia bushes, leads visitors to the grandeur of her estate, promising a glimpse into a world of timeless elegance and sophistication. Upon entering the threshold of her palatial abode, one is immediately struck by the exquisite attention to detail that permeates every corner. Antiques adorn the beautifully furnished rooms, each piece a testament to Jacqueline's discerning eye for craftsmanship and heritage. The air is imbued with a sense of history, as elegant rooms span off from a sweeping staircase, leading guests on a journey through a tapestry of timeless beauty. A grand chandelier hangs majestically above the central hallway, casting a soft glow upon the space below, where a stately grandfather clock stands as a silent sentinel, marking the passage of time with unwavering precision. Shelves lined with leather-bound albums of magazine clippings, trophies, Delicate china figurines and cherished family photographs bear witness to a life well-lived, a legacy of memories meticulously curated and preserved. Amidst the hustle and bustle of her bustling household, Jacqueline reigns as the serene and gracious matriarch, her presence a calming force amidst the whirlwind of activity. As multiple members of staff tend to various tasks, from watering the meticulously manicured gardens to preparing sumptuous lunches and ensuring every surface gleams with immaculate cleanliness. Jacqueline remains the focal point of it all. Even as she is engaged in the filming of a television documentary, her surprisingly resonant voice echoes throughout the corridors, a testament to her natural charisma and commanding presence. From a distant drawing room, her words carry with them a sense of authority and warmth drawing all those within earshot into her orbit with effortless ease. In person, Jacqueline Smith emanates a warmth and kindness that belies her status as an icon of elegance and sophistication. From the moment we meet, her first concern is for my comfort, her genuine concern evident as she inquires about lunch. It's a small gesture, but one that speaks volumes about her innate grace and consideration for others. As we settle into conversation, Jacqueline's demeanor remains as elegant as her attire. Dressed in a pristine ensemble of cream, she exudes effortless chic. Her ensemble comprising an elegant shirt with flowing bell-shaped sleeves, trousers from her own Kmart brand, and impeccably crafted Celine stilettos. Despite her considerable wealth and the luxury she could easily indulge in, Jacqueline remains committed to her work ethic, a trait instilled in her since childhood. Reflecting on her continued involvement with her eponymous brand at Kmart, Jacqueline speaks with passion and conviction. For her, it's not merely about business. It's about giving back and empowering women to feel beautiful and confident without breaking the bank. In her eyes, Fashion and elegance should be accessible to all, and she takes pride in championing affordability without compromising on style or quality. As we delve into discussion about the latest installment of the Charlie's Angels film series, Jacqueline's enthusiasm is palpable. She sees the enduring appeal of the franchise as a testament to its timeless charm and universal resonance. With Kristen Stewart taking the reins in the latest iteration, Jacqueline recognizes the power of reinvention and the enduring legacy of a concept that continues to captivate audiences across generations. What's interesting, she muses, is what a winning concept it is and how it can repeat itself in different ways. It's a sentiment that encapsulates Jacqueline's own journey, a testament to her ability to adapt, evolve, and thrive in an ever-changing industry. 
As she continues to pave the way for future generations of women, Jacqueline Smith remains an inspiration, a true embodiment of grace, beauty, and unwavering determination. When Charlie's Angels burst onto the television scene in 1976, it shattered conventional portrayals of women in the media landscape, an era predominantly characterized by depictions of women as housewives or secondary characters in the shadow of their male counterparts. TV was a domain where hard-edged cop shows and action-packed dramas were strictly the realm of men, with women seldom seen in roles of power or independence. Into this world, Charlie's Angels introduced a revolutionary concept, three capable, intelligent, and independent women working together as private detectives, a premise that was both groundbreaking and inspiring. Jacqueline Smith, one of the original angels, reflects on the show's legacy and its timely message of female empowerment. Having made a cameo in the 2003 movie adaptation produced by Drew Barrymore, she chose not to appear in the latest film. Yet her connection to the ethos of Charlie's Angels remains unbreakable. I think the power of women standing together is very appropriate today, Jacqueline muses. In a world where the push for gender equality and mutual support among women has gained significant momentum, the core message of Charlie's Angels, of women having each other's backs and cheering each other on, resonates more powerfully than ever. Jacqueline fondly recalls the meteoric rise to fame that she and her co-stars experienced following the show's debut. We were rock stars, she says, a statement that barely scratches the surface of the cultural phenomenon that Charlie's Angels became. The show consistently ranked in the top ten drama shows in both Britain and the U.S. by the end of its first series, a testament to its widespread appeal and the radical shift it represented in television storytelling. The Angels became icons of a new era, embodying a vision of femininity that was at once glamorous and assertive. The impact of the show was such that the cast found themselves inundated with fan mail, receiving thousands of letters every week. The fervor of their fan base was overwhelming, necessitating guards outside their hotel rooms to manage the adulation that could otherwise have become intrusive. Otherwise, people would be knocking on our doors all night long, Jacqueline recalls. The intensity of some fans' devotion led to the creation of what Jacqueline humorously refers to as a nut file, a collection of overzealous fan interactions that sometimes escalated to the point where restraining orders were necessary. One particularly persistent fan went as far as delivering the same letter every day for a year. Charlie's Angels emerged at a time when television was ripe for transformation, challenging societal norms and expectations around women's roles both on and off the screen. Yet, its reception was not without controversy. Critics, including some factions within the feminist movement, leveled accusations against the show claiming it reduced its female protagonists to mere Barbie dolls prancing around. These critics argued that the series, despite its groundbreaking premise of women in traditionally male roles, undermined its potential empowerment message through the frequent portrayal of the angels in pretty things, such as bikinis and cocktail dresses. Jacqueline Smith, one of the pillars of the iconic trio acknowledges these criticisms, but offers a nuanced perspective. We wore pretty things, but we didn't flaunt our sexuality. It wasn't salacious, she counters, highlighting a distinction between the show's aesthetic choices and its narrative substance. For Jacqueline, the essence of Charlie's Angels lay not in the wardrobe, but in the portrayal of strong, capable women navigating a world of danger and mystery with intelligence and camaraderie. But I didn't feel exploited, she asserts, a testament to her sense of agency and self-respect during the show's run. I would have walked away if I felt that. In my heart of hearts, I knew who I was. The financial and commercial success of Charlie's Angels reflected its massive popularity. Jacqueline's remuneration, starting at $5,000 per episode and swelling to $40,000,
underscored the show's escalating acclaim and her invaluable contribution to its legacy. Beyond their salaries, the Angels benefited from the show's extensive merchandising empire, which included everything from lunch kits and hair accessories to dolls designed with their input, further entwining their identities with the series. The bond formed between the original trio, Jacqueline Smith, Farrah Fawcett, and Kate Jackson, was forged in the crucible of sudden fame and shared experience. We went across that bridge, and in a blink of an eye, our lives changed, Jacqueline reflects, noting the rarity and preciousness of starring in a hit show. This shared journey, marked by its highs and lows, created a connection among them that was unparalleled, sustaining its significance over four decades. To be in a show that's a hit, that's rare. I guess that's why we're talking about it 40 years later. The dynamic interplay of personalities among the original Charlie's Angels trio, Farrah Fawcett, Kate Jackson, and Jacqueline Smith, contributed significantly to the show's chemistry and its enduring appeal. Jacqueline Smith, reflecting on the distinct characteristics that each brought to the table, paints a picture of a team that was as diverse in temperament as it was united in purpose. Farrah Fawcett, with her luscious pin-up beauty, exuded an aura of innocence that belied her status as a cultural sex symbol of the era. Kate Jackson, cerebral and outspoken, brought depth and intensity to her role, reflecting a keen intelligence and a willingness to challenge norms. Jacqueline herself was often seen as the mediator, a soft cushion, between the bold, analytical mind of Kati and the vibrant, flashy allure of Farah. This perception of Jacqueline as the peacemaker, the calm center in a whirlwind of strong personalities, was echoed in media descriptions of her as the most placid member of the trio. However, when confronted with the label placid and its implications of being even-tempered to the point of passivity, Jacqueline provides a clarifying chuckle. Oh, I spoke up for myself, she asserts revealing a depth of character that perhaps was not always visible in the public eye. Her admission that she may not have been as vocal in the beginning, attributing it to learned behavior, underscores a journey of personal and professional growth. It's a candid acknowledgement of the evolution of her assertiveness, emphasizing the importance of self-protection in the high-stakes world of Hollywood. The differences in demeanor among the angels were not just a source of behind-the-scenes intrigue. They were a key ingredient in the show's success. It made it interesting that we all had such different demeanors, Jacqueline observes, suggesting that the contrasting personalities contributed to the rich tapestry of the series. This diversity allowed for a broader range of stories and interactions— appealing to a wide audience and enabling viewers to find a character with whom they could identify or admire. Jacqueline Smith from the aspirations of a young dancer to a celebrated icon of television is a narrative steeped in both ambition and personal evolution. Born into the comfort of a middle-class family in Houston, Texas, where her father practiced dentistry, Jacqueline harbored dreams that soared beyond the confines of her home state. Enthralled by the grace and discipline of ballet, she set her sights on one of the most prestigious institutions in the world of dance, the Balanchine School of American Ballet in New York. Yet, despite the prestige of the opportunity, the transition from Texas to the bustling streets of New York City was not without its challenges. I was very homesick. It was just another world, Jacqueline recalls, her voice tinged with the memory of a young woman grappling with the vast cultural and emotional distances she had traversed. As it often happens in the unpredictable journey of life, Jacqueline's path took an unexpected turn. The world of dance, with its exacting demands and the shadow of homesickness, eventually led her to explore new avenues. It wasn't long before she found herself transitioning into the realms of commercials and, subsequently, acting, a pivot that seemed as serendipitous as it was unplanned. Her foray into acting would soon lead to a defining moment in her career, 
the audition for Charlie's Angels. Despite the producer's initial intent to cast a redhead to complement the visual contrast between the blonde Farrah Fawcett and the brunette Kate Jackson, Jacqueline's undeniable chemistry with the other two actresses transcended any preconceived notions of the ideal casting mix. Aaron Spelling, the legendary producer behind the show, recognized something special in the dynamic between the three women, and Jacqueline, at the age of 30, secured her place as the third angel. By this point in her life, Jacqueline had already experienced the ebbs and flows of personal relationships, having been married and divorced twice. Her first husband, actor Roger Davis, and her second actor Dennis Cole, represented chapters of her life that, in hindsight, she chooses not to dwell upon. I don't count the first ones. They were no good, she states, reflecting a candid dismissal of those early unions. Jacqueline's perspective on these relationships is infused with a sense of growth and self-awareness. Raised with the belief that living with someone necessitated marriage, she candidly acknowledges her youthful innocence and the journey towards a more discerning understanding of relationships. I got smart, though, she remarks, encapsulating her evolution from a homesick ballet student in New York to a seasoned actress and sage observer of her own life's narrative. Jacqueline Smith's reflections on her past marriages offer a glimpse into the heart and mind of a woman who has navigated the complexities of love, fame, and personal growth against the backdrop of an illustrious career in the public eye. Her candid admission, probably not. Why waste my time? When asked if she would marry her first two husbands again, speaks volumes about her journey of self-discovery and the wisdom gained through her experiences. It wasn't merely the dissolution of marriages, but the recognition of a fundamental mismatch in values and aspirations that shaped her perspective. The underlying issue, as Jacqueline points out, was her partner's inability to cope with her success. This issue, unfortunately, is not uncommon in relationships where one partner's career ascends significantly. In Jacqueline's case, being both actors, her first two husbands found it challenging to navigate the dynamics of a relationship where her star shone brightly, leading to insecurities and discontent. Despite these early setbacks, Jacqueline's spirit remained unbroken. Her affirmation, I love commitment, I love marriage, I kept trying until I got it right, embodies the resilience and hope that propelled her forward. This relentless pursuit of love and stability led her to Tony Richmond, a British cinematographer. Their union marked a significant chapter in her life, bringing her the joys of motherhood with the birth of their children, Gaston and Spencer Margaret. Gaston, following in the footsteps of the cinematic world as a cameraman, and Spencer Margaret, carving her own path as a designer and yoga instructor stand as testaments to the creative legacy and values Jacqueline and Tony shared. However, the marriage with Tony was not without its trials. The shadows of substance abuse loomed large, testing the bonds of their relationship. Jacqueline's stance, it would have worked with Tony, but I couldn't deal with drugs, I couldn't deal with alcohol, underscores a boundary she found necessary to draw for her well-being and that of her family. This difficult decision, made in the face of deep emotional turmoil, highlights her strength and the courage it takes to walk away from a destructive situation, even when love remains. Her relief and pride in Tony's eventual sobriety, thank goodness he's okay now, he's been clean for 20-odd years, reflects a complex mix of emotions, including forgiveness and recognition of his role as a father. Jacqueline Smith met Brad Allen, a dedicated heart surgeon whose path crossed hers in a profoundly personal way. He was the surgeon who operated on her father. This meeting, initiated through a professional engagement, transitioned into a personal connection when, at the behest of Jacqueline's mother, Brad escorted Jacqueline to her car one evening. This simple act, born out of a gesture of kindness towards her mother, set the stage for a deeper connection. 
Jacqueline's initial perception of Brad's gesture as mere politeness quickly evolved as they shared dinner together, discovering a mutual love for family that would become the bedrock of their relationship. Their marriage, now spanning over two decades, stands as a testament to their shared values and deep love for family, a bond that has only grown stronger with time. Brad, at 65, brought no children of his own into the marriage, but embraced Jacqueline's family as his, becoming an incredible stepfather. His bond with Jacqueline's children, and now with her two-year-old granddaughter, B, who affectionately calls him Pop-Pop, highlights the seamless integration of their lives and the depth of their familial love. Observing Brad through the window, practicing his golf swing, Jacqueline's playful comment about taking his golf club and throwing it away belies a deeper affection and the comfortable, teasing rapport they share. Despite their ability to live a life filled with public attention and glamour, Jacqueline emphasizes their preference for a simpler, more grounded existence. She describes herself as a homebody, a trait that has only been reinforced by her role as a grandmother. The allure of babysitting her granddaughter easily surpasses any temptation to venture out. Reflecting a prioritization of family time over social engagements or the trappings of a celebrity lifestyle. In 2002, Jacqueline Smith faced a personal health scare that tested her strength and resilience in a way few other challenges could. Discovering a lump on her breast, Jacqueline encountered the fear and uncertainty that accompanies such a diagnosis, plunging her into a state of worry not just for herself but for the future of her children. The immediate concern that grips any parent in such a moment, am I going to be here for my children, was met with reassurance from her doctor, who confirmed the early detection of her condition and the promising prognosis. Opting for a lumpectomy, followed by radiation, Jacqueline navigated this daunting period with a determination that speaks volumes about her character. The coincidence that all three of the original Charlie's Angels actresses developed cancer at various points in their lives is a stark reminder of the indiscriminate nature of the disease. With Kate Jackson battling and overcoming breast cancer, and Farrah Fawcett tragically passing away from a rare form of anal cancer in 2009, the trio found themselves bewildered by their shared fate, half-jokingly questioning if it was something as simple as the water they drank that led to their diagnoses. The loss of her mother ten years ago added another layer of emotional complexity to Jacqueline's life, rendering her unable to return to Houston, a city now dense with memories of her mother at every turn. Jacqueline's admission of not being able to delete her mother's phony number is a poignant reflection of her deep. Obsessive a love for her family, a love she humorously suggests might border on the abnormal. Jacqueline's approach to maintaining her age-defying appearance is grounded in healthy living practices. A diet rich in berries and vegetables, regular exercise, and abstention from smoking and drinking lay the foundation for her radiant health. While she acknowledges the use of non-invasive cosmetic treatments like face peels and rejuvenating lasers, she maintains a cautious stance on major cosmetic surgery, guided by a desire to remain true to her natural appearance and wary of the potential for undesirable outcomes a sentiment echoed by her husband Brad, who prefers she avoid surgical interventions. The dynamic between Jacqueline and Brad, particularly in their nighttime routines, offers a glimpse into the charming intricacies of their relationship. Brad's preference for a sleep environment that is cool, dark, and quiet, complete with a mask and earplugs, contrasts amusingly with Jacqueline's struggle to find sleep easily. This difference in their bedtime habits underscores the individual quirks that make their partnership unique and enduring. What do you think about Jacqueline Smith's youthfulness? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.